Regarding quality eight, what does a soul-based understanding that divine truth results in a fearless existence actually look like in my personal life? Well, if I am not afraid of anything, <laughs> obviously there will be very, very large changes to my choices and actions in my personal life. Yeah. From a physical perspective, I won't be afraid of discovering new truths about the universe. So collectively or individually, we would no longer be stopping the discovery process. Mm -hmm. We would no longer be stopping the process of making mistakes and then correcting ourselves based on the measurements we made through making mistakes. We would no longer be afraid of mistakes from a collective or individual perspective. Yeah. So there are many external and internal th changes that would occur if mankind understood at the soul level this, this particular quality of divine truth. We would no longer approve of or accept religious thought that was based around fear. Mm. Either fear of discovery of new truths of the universe from a physical perspective or fear of God or fear of doctrinal uh, errors we would not be afraid of such things. We would be allowing ourselves to discover new facts about the universe and our presence in it, and new facts about God and everything God has created. Mm -hmm. We would be constantly involved in the discovery of new facts. We wouldn't prevent it. We wouldn't use resistance or fear or violence or any other thing to, pre to prevent the discovery of new truth. We would always want to discover new truth. We would have an attitude of wanting to discover new truth. We wouldn't be trying to prevent others from discovering new truth just because we don't believe it mm -hmm. at this point in time. We would allow them to go through the process of discovery of new truth because there's nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> we, would, we would also not be afraid of throwing away false beliefs. We would, in fact, love the fact that we can throw away a false belief. That's one more damaging, controlling thing that we can get rid of. Yeah. <laughs> it is one more thing out of our life that we can allow ourselves to just allow ourselves to get rid of out of our life in such a way that it no longer determines what we choose to do with our life. Yeah. So there are so many positive actions, both collectively and individually, that would be the result if we truly understood this quality of divine truth, that divine truth results in a fearless existence. So if we look at it in four primary areas, we've got the physical area. Mm -hmm. Divine truth results in us not having any more physical fears if we engage the truth about those particular things from an emotional perspective. From an emotional perspective. Divine truth would result that we no longer are terrified emotionally about all sorts of experiences. Yes. You know, we're no longer afraid that somebody, that, that when, some, when our loved one dies, that we're not going to be able to grieve or, in fact, we'll get to the point where we won't even grieve because we know they're still alive because we understand the divine truth about that particular subject. So our emotions will become a lot more settled and calm as a result of understanding this particular truth. In addition, uh, from a spiritual perspective, our belief systems of God, the universe that we live in, are going to substantially change. We won't believe the universe is against us, or God is against us, or God wants to punish us all the time, or we, nor will we feel guilt about past behaviour. We will desire to change past unloving behaviour, but we won't feel this terrible guilt that just nags on us and nags on us that we never release because mm. we realise that's also based around a fear. So from a scientific perspective, we would always be absorbing new truth. Mm -hmm. so, so we would not, just because we have a certain religious belief, discount any scientific evidence. We wouldn't do that. If there was mathematical evidence that was presented to us about a certain truth, we wouldn't discount it just because we have a different belief system. Mm. Mm -hmm. When it comes to personally, there's going to be huge changes too. We won't be afraid of our emotions. We won't try to control others or their emotions because usually when we do that, we're trying to control how we will feel as a result. Mm -hmm. We won't try to impact upon people we love all the time, trying to boss them around or control them and tell them what to do because we understand God's uni universe is a very safe place actually, much safer than what we've made it. Mm. <laughs> Mankind is the most dangerous creature 
in God's universe. And the reason why we're the most dangerous is because we continue to use our will out of harmony with love. And that's what makes us the most dangerous creature in the universe currently. It doesn't need to be that way. And we understand that once we understand that fear is the cause of most of our beliefs about danger. Mm. We, we no longer are constrained by physical limitations anymore because we have an expansive view of the universe. We're no longer afraid to imagine. We're no longer afraid to discover, afraid to make mistakes, afraid to experiment. None of those things would happen anymore. We're no longer afraid of leaving a book that defines a religious viewpoint when it's blatantly obvious that such a book cannot be all of God's truth. Mm -hmm. We're no longer afraid of leaving it. We just leave it because it's, it's easy to leave. We understand there are certain truths in it and there are certain false things in these books. And we accept the truths and at the same time do not accept all of it as truth. Yeah. And we're not afraid of doing that. We're not afraid that some God is going to come along and punish us for doing that. Mm -hmm. We're not afraid that, we're, that some person is going to come along and punish us, although that's higher, much more highly likely than God doing it. Yeah. <laughs> As I said, I individual <laughs> humanity is the most dangerous creature on earth. That's a potential. But even then, we're not afraid of that because we understand God's truth about it. The fact that we have an eternal existence is going to have a huge impact on the, our future choices and decisions. Yeah. So there's all these areas that it's going to positively affect us if we truly feel it. Yeah. But we have to feel it before it has any positive experience. Yeah. Can I run through a few examples? You've touched on a few, but mm -hmm. some of them really speak sure. to me being on the other side of this truth, not that I've accepted yeah. it, but yeah. I see yeah. myself in a lot of these. Sure. So, um, so when we have a soul-based understanding that divine truth results in a fearless existence, we live um, complete, in a completely fearless state. We don't allow fear to dictate how we live our life, even planning and any control of any kind is fear-based. Mm -hmm. um, I don't try to plan my life to control my emotions or my environment. This is a big thing. I feel that what happens with most people is, particularly in the Western yes. world, we have the ability through a, a larger degree of wealth, which often that we've stolen from others mm. in terms of raped other countries to obtain. And we have this ability to control the comfort levels that we experience in our personal life. Yes. The problem with control of the comfort levels that we experience in our personal life is that it's based around fear. We're just trying to avoid certain experiences. Mm -hmm. And if we were truly in harmony with God and in harmony with this principle of divine truth, that divine truth results in a fearless existence, we wouldn't make decisions to improve our comfort in order to avoid something. Yeah. We'd make decisions to improve our comfort because we love yeah. ourselves or love somebody else. We would never make a decision to improve our personal comfort while destroying the personal comfort of another mm -hmm. because all of those actions would actually be out of harmony with love yeah. and therefore we would never take those decisions. And also my choice to harm you in order to get something for myself is driven by a fear that I don't have enough myself yeah. or that there's not enough to go around and these are not truths. The reality is God's created an abundant universe. Mm -hmm. And if we understood that, we would have far less fear. So there's, a, there's some major areas that will affect our life there. Yeah, and I agree that most of us in the West are very accustomed to having a large, um, large amounts of control over our environment and mm. our day-to-day -day lives. Mm -hmm. and, but often that control is, has been done to avoid certain sets of emotions and Often, you know, we see when people have children, for example, or some, some set of events occurs where suddenly they can't have quite as much control, a lot of fears start to get exposed, don't they? Which mm -hmm. shows us that that, that initial um, controlling of our environment happened because we were afraid of certain things. Yes. Yeah. And if you look at the way children learn, even though when they start walking, for example, they're not afraid of falling over, mm -hmm. right? Until and even someone goes, <gasps> Well, even, <laughs> even then they're often not afraid yeah. of falling out. Otherwise, they'd probably never do it. And if they never did it, they'd never walk. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we naturally, as humans from a young age, have this idea that even if we have some negative event that occurs as a result of our desire to know something or do something differently, we are not afraid of it. Fear develops over time. Mm. And usually it's inculcated into the child from the adult or from the adult's environment yeah. into the child. So the child learns it has to be afraid of certain things. 
and certain pains. But when it's little, it's not afraid of feeling pain even because it quite often touches things that causes it to feel pain. Mm. And then 10 minutes later, we'll go and do another thing that causes it to feel pain. It's, it doesn't sit there in a, in a frozen mess emotionally, avoiding every experience because there might be the potential of pain from the experience. Yeah. It doesn't do that. Yeah. We learn that as adults to do that because we don't release the pain that we've experienced. Mm -hmm. And this is a big problem that we face on the planet is that because we don't release past pain, we then now have a fear of future pain which governs our existence. Yeah. So a person who understood this principle would not do that anymore. They would yeah. not let, sorry, let the fear of past pain cause them to drag this pain into the future decisions. Mm. They would actually see the separation between past events and potential future events. And they would try to correct, they would release the past pain, but they would not let themselves focus on the future pain as a potential. They would see that the truth is that God's truth results in a fearless existence. And if that's the truth, then we have the prospect of never having any fear in the future. Yeah. which means that we would then be willing to release the experience of our past fear. Yeah. We're willing to engage the process of experiencing our fears and experiencing our past pain, whether it be physical or emotional or spiritual in its nature. Mm -hmm. So we'd be willing to go through a process of change once we understood this properly at the soul level. Mm. Well, and that's maybe a couple of other examples from this list. I believe I'm completely able to feel all of my own emotions, no matter how painful. And I feel that's another one that could have a lot of discussion about. Yeah. We, we, we constantly believe that there is a certain level of pain, whether it be emotional or physical, and usually it's emotional, that we're unable to cope with, mm -hmm. that we're unable to experience. That is not a God's, one of God's truth. According to God's truth, all pain is able to be experienced and all pain is able to be released. Yeah. So, so when we have this false belief, we are imposing a fear upon our future life and therefore dictating our future decisions through this fear. Mm. Okay, another one. I feel when I'm living in fear, I'm not allowing the full expression of my own personality. And this is another very important one. Uh, I feel a lot of people uh, do not realise in any single moment that they're not allowing the full expression of their own personality and nature. Mm. In fact, the majority of people are heavily suppressing their own personality and nature because of all the fears that they have that are like, it's like a jail that they've created for themselves. Fear is like this jail that we built for ourselves and we sit inside of it and we think we're protected. Right? Yeah. But it's actually a jail. It's, it's, it's not protection at all. It's, it's a lack of freedom, it's slavery to our fear. Once we see that fear results in a, uh, sorry, God's truth results in a fearless existence, and once we see the necessity of releasing fear, we no longer can, can make this jail for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we start challenging the boundaries of this self-imposed, of this self-imposed jail, if you like, yeah. this self-imposed slavery. And we, so we're willing to go beyond our previous experiences in any issue. So if, we're, if before we were afraid of love, now we want to engage love. If before we were afraid of snakes, now we want to pick them up. If before we were afraid of you know, scientific endeavours, now we want to do them. Before we were afraid of learning our own musical instrument, now we want to do it. You know, and, and as a result, we get to discover more about our own personality. Yeah. The main reason why we don't see the true personality of most people is because they are so afraid to develop it due to all of their fears. Mm. And this is a very, very limiting fact about our own personal development. Yeah. Mm. Okay, maybe one final example about what it would look like if I had a soul-based understanding of this truth. I'll not modify myself or my actions in order to please others, which is really just avoiding fear. Yeah, so if, if we think about our desire to please others, basically what we're afraid of is we're afraid that they won't be pleased. <laughs> so, yeah. so we are afraid that somebody else will do, say, take some action or say something or feel something that is going to be very negative for us to experience if we don't do what they want or mm -hmm. don't do what they believe is correct to do. Now, when we're in a fearless place, we don't do that. We, everything is governed by our desire for God's truth only. Yeah. 
It's not governed by what everybody else's personal opinion is anymore. Do we want God's truth or don't we? That's the only real decision that we make under those circumstances. And, and so what we do is we're desirous of God's truth. We want God's truth to become known to ourselves. We want to experience it. We want to understand it. We want to feel it. Rather than going through this process of thinking that other people's opinions really matter. Now, of course, if other people's opinions are more developed in truth, they will have fearless opinions. Yeah. And therefore, they will also help us to become more fearless as we progress in our own opinions and thoughts. But there are many people on the planet who have heavily fear-based opinions, mm -hmm. and we would no longer be focused on pleasing those people in order to get some kind of approval or, or acceptance back, or even in order to prevent violence, yeah. in order to prevent their attack of us. We will no longer do that because we are fearless in our understanding. And we're fearless in our understanding because we understand that God's truth, absolute truth, the truth of the universe always gives us a more fearless existence. Mm -hmm. That's where it's leading us. It's leading us to this place of fearlessness. Of, and we don't need courage anymore because there's nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we only need courage going through this experience of releasing the fear. Yeah, I've often felt that courage is really just the willingness to experience fear. Yes, it is the experience, the willingness to feel it and experience it emotionally. Mm. That's what courage is. But we only need courage until fear is gone. It's gone. Yeah. Once fear is gone, you know, it's almost like, well, what does there need to be courageous about? We just <laughs> plough our head because we like it. <laughs> this is only desire uh, is causes us to move forward after that point. Yeah. So almost like, because we've developed the quality of courage during the fear-based position, obviously we'll still retain the quality, mm -hmm. but we don't actually need it yeah. anymore because there's nothing to be afraid yeah. of and we know there's nothing to be afraid of. But you're saying also in that statement that courage is a quality we can develop. Yes. So, and until we reach the place where there's no fear and then it will stay with us, but we yes. won't actually have any fear in us. Anymore. Exactly. So, yeah. so we need to start having courage mm. because of this divine truth that God's truth results in a fearless existence, this principle of God's truth. We, we come to understand internally that actually there's only, we need to develop courage in order to get rid of our fear. Mm -hmm. We need to get rid of our fear through our, an experience. Once we've done that, we realise that this courage will have led us to a new place. And the new place is now where we know. Yeah. We're no longer afraid. We have nothing to afraid, be afraid of because we know. We know everything we need to know and live in harmony with the love that exists in the universe and the truth that exists in the universe in that place. And even though we haven't discovered all of God's truth, we now no longer have a fear of discovering God's truth. Yeah. And unfortunately, I see on the planet still there are large barriers to discovering more of God's truth because we have so many fears in so many directions. Mm. Some of them are fears of other people's opinions, fear of our own response, fear of our own emotions, fear of our physical pain, fear of our emotional pain, fear of our spiritual pain, you know, fear of God, fear of the universe, fear of the devil who doesn't exist <laughs> and so forth. We've got so many fears yeah. that govern our, our desire for more truth. And this is why people created books like the Bible, so that nobody would have a desire mm. to discover more truth. It's almost like saying, here's my fear-based creation, yep. a book, and this book is the end of all truth, and that's a fear-based statement, yeah. in fact, and this book is the only part of God's word that exists, and that's a fear-based statement, and these fear-based statements all support my fear-based existence. Mm. And and so many books that have been created, particularly religious books that have been created on the planet, have all been created for the sake of supporting our fears. Yeah. And once we no longer have a fear-based existence, we will find that we will not be bound to these books. Mm. We will not be controlled by them. We will not believe the majority of things that are in them anymore. We'll only believe the things that are in them that are actually true, that have been supported by evidence or somebody has verified. Mm. So... Really, this question is about having a soul-based understanding and what that would look like. Mm. But in the previous question, you talked about the fact that even hearing divine truth often exposes um, fear within us. Mm -hmm. And from really this whole discussion of these two questions, you're really saying that this is a process of receiving a soul-based understanding of this truth 
we're going to need courage to do that, to yes. challenge fear with truth. and Because, actually it, because feel... our fear prevents the truth from ever entering us even. Yeah. That's the thing we need to understand. So it's going to require us opening ourselves up to the experience of fear. Yes, because the only way to get rid of fear is by experiencing it. Mm -hmm. and, and unfortunately, while the fear remains within the soul, truth cannot enter on that subject. Yeah. So what we're going to need to do is be ready to experience fear and release it and will in fact desire this eventually. Yes. I know it sounds crazy, but you will desire this eventually. Yeah. You'll get to the point where you desire to experience fear, terror and release it because you know the terror and fear is preventing you from absorbing emotionally more truth. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, you understand that so much that you're prepared to go through the emotional process of doing it. Yeah. Not only prepared, you want to. <laughs> you know, you're not there going in resistance saying, oh, why do I have to do this? You want to because you realise the importance of it to your future existence. So really, we can accept this divine truth, that divine truth results in a fearless existence. We can receive that and that will then begin to dictate our actions to challenge fear in every area. It, we won't yes. be fearless when, necessarily when we, when we accept this truth or how does but that work? But the truth won't enter our soul yep. until we've released the fear. Gosh. But at least from an intellectual perspective, we are willing to challenge the process. Yeah. We are willing to develop some, the feeling of courage yeah. to work through our fears. The, the problem that most people have is they sort of, they want to use the intellectual truth to skip over their fears. Yeah. So what they, well, you know, so when I talk about the fact that there is no thing, such thing as, you know, um, dying completely, you know, that you're always going to have a life after death. Most people now who've listened to us say, yes, I know that, I have no fear of that. And yet you put them in the situation where they're dying and you see they're terrified. Yeah. And the reason why they're terrified is because it's not yet an emotional feeling within them. Mm -hmm. It's only a thought. And this is the problem is that we cannot, any of these qualities of divine truth, we cannot absorb with our mind only. Our mind can help us to go through an emotional experience to confront them. Mm -hmm. But we cannot absorb them with our mind only and expect there to be a change. Mm. The change has to happen emotionally. The only way for terror and fear to exit our soul, exit our emotional experience, is by the experience of it. Mm -hmm. If we refuse to experience it, none of the divine truths, even though they are all fearless in their nature, will actually cause a change in us unless we go through the release of the fear-based experience. Yeah, I suppose if I contrast between yourself and myself, you still have fears within you, obviously, yes. you're not at one with God yet. Yep. I still have an immense amount of fear and terror within me. Yes. But you've gone through a process of releasing quite a lot of fear and terror. And when I interact with you, I feel that you know the divine truth that divine truth results in a fearless existence because you live your life in a way where you don't try to control your experience or your yeah. environment, yeah. you desire your emotions. Yeah. So you've actually received even a soul-based understanding of this truth. Yes. In this or process. Or connected with that soul-based understanding of the truth yeah. rather than allowing my fear to dominate my intellectual and emotional belief. Yeah. Whereas I'm still coming at it from the place of intellectually agreeing with that mm -hmm. and then needing to challenge the emotional belief, which is, no, nah, exactly. uh, fear is going to keep me safe. And, and this is the emotional belief that stops your progression. It causes yeah. your stagnation, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so you know that and aware of that, how much it's causing your stagnation. Yes. And this is the case for the majority of people who hear divine truth. It's their emotional, um, their emotional the, absorption of fear yeah. that's still present within themselves that they're not allowing themselves to experience that causes the emotional rejection of divine truth. Mm -hmm. So they have an intellectual acceptance while at the same time having an emotional rejection. Yeah. And this becomes very confusing and confronting yeah. uh, to have both things at the same time. Because the one thing, your mind is telling you to do one thing, <laughs> but your, your heart, your feelings are telling you to do something completely different. Yeah. Your mind's telling you, don't go down the fear road, don't go down the fear <laughs> road. And your heart's telling you, go down the fear road, go down the fear road. Or you know? the other way around, is it? 
Oh. Well, no. Oh, While the fear you. remains within the heart. Do what fear says. Do what fear your says. Your heart's telling you, do what the fear says. Do what the fear says. Yeah. Do what the fear says. And your mind's going, don't do what the fear says. What are you doing? <laughs> this is after you've accepted intellectually divine truth, but mm -hmm. not emotionally. Mm -hmm. Now, the majority of people who have heard divine truth currently on the planet have only done that. They've accepted it intellectually, but not emotionally, because they're unwilling to go through the emotional experience of the release of the fear, mm -hmm. the terror. It's one of the hardest emotions to release. The majority of people avoid that immensely. So they, they spend most of their life creating a life to avoid it. Yeah. And so it takes a lot of effort to break down the resistance to feeling the terror that exists within you, you as an individual. Mm -hmm. But once you do, now the divine truth that's in your mind can right. enter your heart. Yeah. And now the fear no longer governs everything about your your actions and, and what, what you choose to do, choose to believe, choose to accept, choose to act upon. Mm -hmm. you, you're no longer governed by this terror that exists within you because you know you can experience it. You don't even have to have released it completely. You know you can experience it. You've done it many times before, so you know you can do it again. And you know you didn't die doing it. <laughs> you know that things didn't go badly doing it. In fact, you know your life improved. So you now have faith that if you release the terror, then um, the truth will be able to enter you emotionally to such a complete degree that eventually you'll become at one with God on the subject and you'll have no emotional feeling of fear or terror within you at all. Mm -hmm. No matter what the justification was prior, yeah. you now no longer have the justification for the fear either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes. It's a beautiful quality of divine truth, actually. It is. And, and poorly understood by the majority of people who have even listened to, the, to divine truth on the planet. Mm. And it was very poorly understood in the first century as well. Yeah. Um, most people who listened to divine truth in the first century still had a lot of personal fear. Mm. And until they went through that experience of releasing that fear, then they started to have a lot of courage because yeah. courage develops. The more you release fear, the more courageous you can become because it's easier. <laughs> yeah, because you're in a, in a sense, you're not afraid of the experience of fear anymore. No. You might still have it within you, but you know that you can experience it. Yes. And this is where I see a lot of us, myself included, getting stumped. Yes. Where we're, you know, have a few forays into feeling a little bit of fear. Yep. But this, this um, faith that that divine truth will result in a fearless existence yep. is is still not well developed and so our will doesn't get used in that direction when what i'm feeling more and more is that it's it's a decision of will how am i going to use my will yes. will i do it in harmony with faith in in this quality because i have to sort of experiment with that and grow my faith i mm -hmm. have some I have some good experiences with that, mm. but it's still not entered my soul. No. So, because um, your fear still dominates the experience, it still yeah. dominates your willingness and the actions that I take daily, really. Mm. Yeah. So, would that be your? What would be your advice to someone who has this truth intellectually? Mm -hmm. It hasn't entered their soul. Yep. How, how? There is only one best... solution. Yep. And that is, you must at some point take and make an active choice to actually feel and experience all of your fear and terror. Mm. That's the only way that this is going to change. And that's a soul-based choice as well, so it's isn't it? It's got to be a soul-based choice. An intellectual choice. It'll grow over time. It may grow over time till you get to that choice. You have to confront every single fear-based perspective in order to get to make to that, that choice. Mm -hmm. Now, I see both on earth and in the spirit world in the first six dimensions, huge amounts of fear still. There's huge amounts of people in... When I say huge amounts, I'm talking like 30 billion people who are in a state of terror and fear. Mm. And that's a lot of people who are unwilling to feel and experience their own fears. And it also present, prevents every single one of those people from understanding God's truth from an emotional perspective. Yeah. So it has such a huge effect mm. on our ability to grow towards God, but also our ability to be happy. Yeah. And, and it is the single most important reason why the earth is in its current condition and why people in the spirit world who, after they've passed, are currently in a condition of unhappiness. Mm -hmm. Fear is the most dominant emotion that is retained within the human race still. And while it is the most dominant emotion, it is going to prevent 
the absorption of new truths. Yeah. And, and so it's, it's, it's very important that all of us recognise the effect of fear in our lives. Mm. 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 Thank you. Mm.